In the wake of the Santa Fe High School shooting, which left 10 dead and 14 injured, there was an interview with a student that really stood out. It's been happening everywhere. I felt, I've always kind of felt like eventually it was going to happen here too. Because of previous shootings, she thought that her school could be next, and that can be traumatizing in and of itself. She's one of the more than 187,000 students who've experienced gun violence at schools since the Columbine shooting in 1999. We have provided grief counselors at several locations for our students. When school shootings happen, experts are brought in to help turn crime scenes back into a place where students feel safe. In the real world, we talk about closure, you know, about an event which I don't like. So I use the word resolution. So that means you resolve it enough to move forward with your life. Dr. Bill Fole is a psychologist who's visited schools after traumatic events like shootings. When a school shooting happens, um, what happens next for people who do what it is you do? Okay, for people like us, what we want to do, it, let's talk about it in stages or tiers. The first stage is to get a sense of safety, uh, is to reopen the schools, make sure that it's safe, usually with police presence. When we come into the school, we want to deal with the rumors, we want to see what support systems exist, we want to find out which kids are most vulnerable, and we kind of triage that through. Uh, because you can't deal with everybody and not everybody needs it. Initially, our response is, is to get equilibrium back, to establish a sense of safety, to see who's most vulnerable, who may be injured, psychologically as well as physically, to reach out and provide them with a way to tell their story, and then to monitor after that. It's extremely important to be able to have folks tell their story in a safe environment. Uh, that's the, the key ingredient. Fall has been dispatched to a number of cities following school shootings, including Chardon, Ohio, Grundy, Virginia, and the city with possibly the youngest school shooter on record, Flint, Michigan. A six-year-old first-grade boy at Buell Elementary had found a gun at his uncle's house where he was staying because his mother was being evicted. He brought the gun to school and shot another first-grader, six-year-old Kayla Rowland. Uh, the community was devastated. It's a very poor community, uh, which was unusual at that point in time for the shootings. And they had no resources. So I stayed connected with them for almost two years. A 15-year-old male student walked into the school with the pistol in his hand. The suspect readied his rifle and began shooting into rooms 12, 15. The victims of the shooting were transported by uh, EMS I wasn't surprised, I was just scared. Because of uh, the frequency of school shootings and the amount of coverage that has been focused on school shootings, um, is, is hearing about another shooting or thinking that another shooting could happen, is that considered a form of trauma? It can be, because the fact that I, it does happen. Kids who are already vulnerable or at risk, who see this through the media, uh, the World Trade Center 9-11 is one example of that, tend to also exhibit the same trauma patterns as kids who actually witnessed it. Communities need the support as much as the schools. That if you have a supportive community, and many times after a school shooting it divides over the good guys and the bad guys, and that has caused problems, but if a community can be supportive to the schools, and the schools have enough resources, we can do a lot of good. Get involved with your schools and communities and make them safe. Don't settle for anything else. It's an action, it's not a thought.